greeting and you're invited to respond with the words printed in bold. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Welcome, welcome to our time of worship. I'm Poppy, privileged to be parish priest here in Tetbury. And we gather on this feast of Christ the King. This is the last Sunday of our church year. We began the year with the hope of the coming Messiah, our Emmanuel, God come to be with us. And now we end the year by proclaiming our faith in the utter and universal sovereignty of Christ our King the King of Love. And so we come before God. We hear God's call to live in love. We know how often we mess up and fail to do that. We pray for God's forgiveness now. Jesus says, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is close at hand, so let us turn away from sin and turn to Christ, making our confession in penitence and faith. The kingdom is yours, but we turn away from your just rule. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The power is yours, but we trust in our own power and strength. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. The glory is yours, but we fall short of the glory of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Father, whose Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King, keep the Church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit down for our first reading. Our first reading is from Daniel, chapter 7, beginning at verse 9. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient One and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ 
according to John. Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Prepare our hearts, O God, to accept your word. Silence in us any voices but your own, so that we may hear your word and also do it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please do sit down. So here we are at the end of another church year. As I said at the beginning, we began the year as we always do with that hope of the coming Messiah, our Emmanuel, God with us. And we end by proclaiming our faith in Christ's universal sovereignty, Jesus, Lord of heaven and earth, bringing in his kingdom of truth and love, life, justice and peace. With Pilate's question, our Gospel reading this morning from John throws us in at the deep end of what it means to speak of Jesus as King. Pilate's question, are you the King of the Jews? You can hear Pilate's question dripping with sarcasm. After all, Pilate has just summoned Jesus into his presence. Pilate is in charge, and Jesus is at his beck and call. Pilate will send him to be flogged, to be a diversion for the cruel play of his soldiers. He holds Jesus' very life in his hand. It's much more like... Call yourself a king. All of this brings into sharp relief the contrast between different types of power going on here. We've got Pilate and the Jewish authorities outside and Jesus. It's interesting that the time when the gospel writer, John, chooses to focus on the question of Jesus' kinship the time that John chooses is as Jesus stands, powerless and humiliated before a Roman overlord. In the other three Gospels, Matthew, Mark and Luke, they are much more traditional references to the idea of kinship, the sort of thing that we had in the Old Testament. That very powerful image in John's Gospel, the only significant previous mention of Jesus as king is just after the feeding of the 5,000, 
when Jesus realizes that the crowd is about to come and force him to be king, and he withdraws to the mountain. This whole sense of ambiguity in John's gospel around the question of Jesus as king is only underlined as the passion narrative continues. After his encounter with Christ, Pilate in front of the crowd asks, shall I crucify your king? And then again, that inscription on the cross over the dying Jesus. Jesus, King, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. That mockery, that utter humiliation, not just of Jesus, but of the whole Jewish nation. We, the Romans, will take your hopes of liberation and restoration, and we will grind them under our heel. Then listen to Jesus' words as he stands before Pilate and responds to that question, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus says, my kingdom is not from this world. My kingdom is not from here. It's helpful to understand that Jesus is not saying, my kingdom is in heaven, out there, otherworldly. But he is saying, my kingdom isn't rooted in the world. It isn't rooted in what the world understands as kingship and power. If you want to talk about my kingdom and my kinship, you will have to turn everything upside down. What you, Pilate, understand, what the world understands, is intimidation, domination and force. To secure your own interests, you rely on intimidation, domination, and force. And if that was the sort of kingdom I rule over, if that is the sort of king I am, then my followers would be taking up arms in my defense. But my kingdom is not from that place. Jesus doesn't build his kingdom by these methods. But he tells us what he does do. He speaks. And the people who are drawn to follow him, the people who are called into his kingdom, are the ones who listen to his voice. There's a beautiful depth to these words, beautiful resonance. You hear in those words of the good shepherd whose sheep know his voice. You hear of Lazarus who knew Jesus' voice and came out of the tomb, his life restored. You hear Mary Magdalene as she recognizes Jesus when he calls her name. Jesus builds his kingdom simply by speaking his words of love. And those who join him in his kingdom and building his kingdom are the ones who listen to those words. Jesus' kingdom is defined by relationship shaped by absolute love. Perhaps the most poignant thing to realize as we reflect on this gospel account, as we think of Jesus standing before Pilate, here he is in the epicenter of human cruelty and barbarity swirling around him, greed, selfish ambition, rivalry and hatred. 
And you realize, as you listen to Jesus speaking of his kingdom, he is speaking of a kingdom that he knows. This isn't wishful thinking for Jesus. Jesus has come from God and will return to God. Jesus has already lived and dwelt in the utter bliss of heaven where God's will is done. And how he longs for that kingdom to come on earth. And that's our prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Our prayer that we will hear Jesus speaking to us, speaking to us the voice of love, and that we will respond. That in the midst of all that is dark and wrong in our world, we will hold on to that voice of love and live out that love in our lives. With all that it means to know Jesus as our King. Amen. Loving Father, bless these gifts and all gifts that are offered in your name. Take all that we are and all that we have and use them in your service. Amen.
You are invited to stand as we make our profession of faith. Brothers and sisters, I ask you to profess together the faith of the Church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of the heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, you are invited to sit or kneel for our time of prayer. In our prayers today, the response to the words, Father, by your spirit, is bring in your kingdom. <clears throat> Let us pray. <clears throat> Christ our King, keep us calm and faithful in all troubles. Let us not be afraid, for you rule over all, and your kingdom will come. Give strength and direction to all who seek to do your will, for all who strive for peace, all who work for righteousness. Guide all who proclaim your coming and your kingdom. Father, by your spirit, bring in your kingdom. Christ our King, may we know that you are ever present in all life, you are there at the centre of power where decisions are made. Yet you are with the weak and the humble whom no one notices. We pray for all who seek justice and, and maintain order, for all rulers and people in authority. We pray for our local community, for our schools, their staff and pupils, for those who care for our health and well-being, May they be supported and comforted by your spirit at this time of great stress and anxiety. Father, by your spirit, bring in your kingdom. Christ, our King, rule in our hearts and in our homes. May love, peace and forgiveness be known among us. May we seek to know, to show, we belong to you and you love us. We pray for broken homes and broken hearted people, for all who have been parted physically or emotionally from their loved ones. Father, by your spirit, bring, bring in your, your kingdom. Christ our King, give hope and vision to the suffering let them be aware of your love and your kingdom. Keep, O oh Lord, in your grasp all who are losing their grip on life. Enfold in your love all who are fearful and anxious. We pray for the troubled in body, mind or spirit. We remember before you all who are ill. We remember those for whom our prayers have been asked and bring to you anyone known to any of us who is unwell. Father, by your spirit, bring in your kingdom. 
Will you give thanks that you are Lord of all? Your kingdom cannot fail. Death has no dominion over us. We give thanks that your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and our loved departed ones are with you in glory. We pray for our friends and loved ones departed, remembering particularly John the Shepherd, whose funeral took place this week. Father, by your spirit, bring in your kingdom. Come, Lord, and rule in our hearts until your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Father, by your spirit, bring in your kingdom. Continuing in prayer with the prayers requested this morning. Please pray for the swift and complete return to good health of all those who have suffered from COVID, particularly the young, babies and pregnant mothers. Please pray for Hannah, age 22, struggling to hold down her third job. May the Lord give her strength and peace. And with Hannah we pray for all young people seeking to find their way these difficult times. Pray that you will bless them, Father. Father, by your spirit, bring in your kingdom. And we say together, merciful Father, Father <coughs> accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
flood our lives with goodness and truth, gathering into one in your kingdom, a divided and broken humanity. Therefore, with all who can give voice in your creation, we glorify your name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only you say the word, and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your holy people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, God of mercy, by whose grace alone we are accepted and equipped for your service, stir up in us the gifts of your Holy Spirit and make us worthy of our calling, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Amen. Amen. So uh, notices do carry on reading your keeping in touch email if you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> have a chat with me afterwards and we'll get you added to the list because it's, it's how we share all our news. And just to highlight uh, a couple of things. So we are galloping towards Advent. <laughs> there is an Advent quiet day next Friday at 10 till 3. Um, and it's a, in Shipton Moyne Village Hall, which is a lovely facility. There'll be plenty of space for us to gather safely. And uh, it's just time to share in um, a preparation for Advent. So our theme this year for Advent is God in the everyday. And it's kind of building on our experience of Zoom worship where we all gathered and worshipped at the kitchen table. And I think it gave quite a lot of us a different sense of where God is and how, how we serve and worship God. So in the, at the quiet day and then in our Advent home groups, this is an opportunity that will be our theme running through the, the quiet day and the Advent home groups. And there's information about those groups on the Keeping in Touch email. Um, there's an invitation to take part in this year's Posada. So this is Mary and Joseph and the donkey through Advent, traveling around um, Tetbury from home to home. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to do. If you'd like to take part, have a look at the, the Keep in Touch email. It's thank you to Geraldine for our prayer focus, that wonderful, faithful um, guidance week by week, and the invitation to pray together on Tuesday mornings on Zoom, and you can chat to Sarah about that. There's, a, there's also an invitation, if anybody's thinking about being confirmed or know somebody who's um, interested in being confirmed, so that's the confirmation of their baptism promises, and then it, it, this kind of invitation to share in Holy Communion, I've got somebody who's being prepared, and four teenagers in Long Newton who are going to be confirmed next March. All oh, good stuff. So uh, if anybody wants to join in, let me know. We have our Christmas fair on Saturday the 4th of December. And uh, there's good stuff about Santa's recycling list this Christmas. It's been wonderful to share this time together um, in our final hymn we're singing. Jesus, the light. What, how, what is it? Jesus, the light of your love is shining. Anyway, if anybody knows the clapping, I'll be clapping, and just join in. Okay. Thank you, Jonathan.
Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. One in heart and one in mind and empowered by the Spirit, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank <laughs> you.